Okay, I'm, I'm well, back. Hello, Miles. I'm back. <laughs> How you doing? Are we live? Yeah, we are. Yes. <laughs> very nice. Good to see you again. Doing I think I haven't good. seen you in person since Japan. Has it been that long? Damn, yeah, that's right. Now we're seeing each other in Barcelona last yeah. month. Yeah. Right. We've been managing. So where are you at? I'm in a Seal Beach, California. Top of the morning. Good evening to you. Cool. Yeah, day setting in Barcelona, kind of rainy, not so good. But still yeah. a good day because we're out. Skate Tales is out. Yeah. I'm on a massage chair, if you don't mind. Massaging my back on this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Been skating a lot yesterday. Yeah? This is my friend's artwork. My friend Dave, Dave Huang. This is his art. That's Anyways, cool. yeah, Skate Tales. Here we are. It's come out. Super stoked. Finally. It was some of the best trips I ever been on last year with you. Can you remind people you where we went? We went to Ethiopia, Japan, Brazil, and three episodes were filmed in the U.S. as well. Pennsylvania, Detroit. I'm I hope some of you guys watching already seen this seen the episodes because I haven't. Yeah, well, they're live on Red Bull TV right now, all of them. I know Tino, Tino, who came to Ethiopia with us, just sent me a photo, drinking a coffee and scrolling through the episodes. And he has them in Spanish too with subtitles. So that's a pretty cool is thing. It, is it free of charge to watch? Yeah, it is. It's, uh, it's on the, they have a Red Bull TV app that works on the TVs. And actually, you can see it online as well, and you can see like scroll through the six episodes. But we're also going to be launching them on YouTube once a month. So tomorrow at 9 a.m. in uh, Central European time, which is like Barcelona, whatever, it's going to be up on, on YouTube. And then the first Monday of every month following, we're going to have a new episode up there. Unless you want to binge watch and go straight to Red Bull TV. <laughs> both both options. Yeah. So I think the oh, yeah. one of the things that we have is that Danny did a little did a few cuts of uh, some of uh, the most interesting and peculiar images of the episodes that we did. So we have them all together and we can play them to you. And it's going to be something refreshing because actually you haven't seen most of it, so it's going to be something new to yeah. you. Right, I guess I'm excited watch to the see. One. Let's go. Remember to ask questions online. It's what Bam Argera's house. Here? Back to what back with Ethan on? Loy. Just uh, skateboarding at Bam's house, really. Brothers Loy's, the brothers of Loy. David Loy and Ethan Loy, right there. Damn, Hagger not front there. This. <laughs> Place, uh, in the like a shed of Bam's shed and uh, yeah he built it Danny Way design park and uh, Bam said he wants to make everything twice smaller because it's too big for him to actually skate it but he skates it I've seen some footage of Bam in there pretty, pretty gnarly park actually to skate on yeah, it's a Danny Way design right here So how was it yeah. out there? Can you tell? How was it when we were out there? What was like? Can you let people know what we were doing? That like, we just spent with them five days, and how was just hanging out there in his house with them? Yeah, we went to to film an episode about Bam, and wow, this was insane. And uh, yeah, hoping to see Bam skate too, but he was injured at the moment, so he just like took us around, showed us around town. We did a little interview, and every night like somebody else would show up at his house and. It'd just be madness. It's like jackass in real life, you know? Every night, like one night there was a band playing on the corner, like right there. 
So we were there recording a music video another day throughout his yard. David Loy. Do you, you remember? Can you, can, can, do you remember how it wasn't so easy to get David out there with us, and then something happened that wow, somebody made his life. Oh yeah, the Birdman sent David out. David told Tony Hawk that there's a, a, a filming at Bam's house, so Tony hooked it up and got David a flight. And then his brother Ethan was there, my teammate. Both of them are super sick on skateboarding. And yeah, Tony these? Hawk, thank you. This is a little sketchy, a little sketchy. It was hard that day to skate, it took me forever. But not this guy. This guy, Hagernot, he used to actually live in FDR. He would live under the ramps right there. So that trick was easy for him. I mean, looks easy. And this is Bam's other house. We didn't stay at this house, but this is where we went to bomb the hill. Ugh. It's scary. Is that, trying I, to do it switch. I was thinking about that. Is that the only way? How 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 do you get out of uh, such an arty downhill? You gotta go down on your butt, pretty much. Is that the only way to get out of it? Yeah, I mean, maybe it'd be smarter to slide on the ass in the grass, not in the asphalt. But I don't know. It's really fast. I'd probably crush in the trees if I do that. And that's Donnie Barley, legendary Donnie Barley. OG, double OG, triple OG skater, one of the best styles. And he came out one night with Brandon Westgate and skated with us. And yeah, just trying to keep it going. Like, There's that's Brandon. Westgate right there. Brandon. Trey flip. Booties. Yeah, I told him, hey, Brandon, can you please film a trick for uh, this Red Bull thing? And he's like, all right, I'll do a trick. I was like, can you do that trip? And I was like, all right. And he blasted this. Yeah. Brandon's super cool. So is David. I heard he just got hurt. I've been skating with him uh, recently. David? Oh, yeah. I saw him. I saw him on his feet. But he got he's hurt. ripping so he's, that day. He's injured now. All right. Questions are starting to come in. All right, you want me to read you some of those? What was oh, you your go. favorite place? My so, favorite place was, uh, I don't do favorites. All of them were my favorite. But I think, I think they might be, we can, we can keep that question to the trips that you did on the skate tails. Anywhere in particular that oh, you of really course. liked? I like them all equally. They were different and unique in each way and I love every place where I went to. It was super interesting. Cool. I mean, to go to Ethiopia, like I've always been a fan of the Ethiopian flag, you know, and 420, everybody. And yeah, Japan is always nice to go to. Brazil has got some great food, great people. Shout out the Yupi family. Yeah. And of course, Dan Mancina, Justin Bishop. Hope you guys are listening. Much love. And yeah, matters. What's Beaver. my favorite trick? What do you mean, Beaver? Oh, Beaver? Definitely Beaver. I'm going to come see Beaver soon. As, so as, as soon as this COVID is over. Anyways, am I planning I can on going back to El Toro? <laughs> nah, 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 nah. Isn't there skate stoppers there? I was thinking about doing the firecracker switch, but that's claiming. That's claiming. I don't know. <laughs> it's all right. You can claim. All right. Yeah. There's another one here. What is your favorite spot and trick you got from the whole show? Uh, maybe Travis Pastrana's house was rad. Doing the kickflip in his backyard and then a power slab and then jump into his skate park. I like the angle that you filmed. Even though it was a little shaky, I was still stoked. And that was a gnarly hill Ooh. bomb. Too bad Travis Pastrana wasn't there to witness it himself, but hopefully he checks the footage. What about um, what about something? Let's 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 maybe say something about Bam's episode that's not really on the show. 
some story that we can tell about it. You remember when we go, went to FDR and they were doing like, they were building the DIY. They were like just stretching it and making it bigger, the skaters themselves. Oh yeah, definitely. FDR is built by locals. It's the, one of the biggest DIY skate parks I feel in the world. And yeah, they were just digging with digging for more like big bulldozers, a lot of muscle from the homies. That was yeah. right. I guess I guess that for me for me that was something quite impressive because you usually see DIYs right, and people are building and they're building. It's pretty basic everything. But those guys out there, they had like a bulldozer. They had like they were they had rented it, rented it themselves, and they were like driving them yeah. themselves <laughs> and like doing it like heavy machinery. I was like, whoa, they're serious about it. So that was pretty. Rough. Speaking of Bam's episode, there's some footage we had to cut out. Remember, we couldn't use some. Maybe like <laughs> yes, me naked jumping into the swimming pool. I was First day naked, yeah. <laughs> and then one day we were getting in the cars to go skate, but then some random guys like they were staying at the house too that came over. They're like, "Hey, where's Matters? Where's Matters?" <laughs> so I was like, "All right." I came out, and he had his wiener in a hot dog with mustard and ketchup, and I was like, "Whoa, <laughs> that's amazing!" Let me have a bite of that. <laughs> yeah, they were filming it. Right? There were some. They were doing some kind of jackass thing. Yeah, they were basically trying to recreate Jackass and do their own thing. That was rad. Was that the cheeseburger part of that crew? Or just a cheeseburger no. was, his own, was his own thing? Cheeseburger. Are we not using cheeseburger in the episode? I'm not sure. I don't know. I, I don't remember, actually, but we might not be using it. So maybe you can say there something was about cheeseburger. Big, big, big guy cheeseburger that had just maybe like, what is it? Baby, baby cheeseburger is his name. Baby cheeseburger. And he's like this big guy with a cowboy hat, naked, just has like a helmet covering his, uh, his, uh, how do you say that? His int intimate parts. Yeah. <laughs> and then he was d doing tail drop, whatever, in, the, in Bam's ramp and ate shit, but then did it third try. I guess he was going through some shit, like split up with his girlfriend or lost his job or something, but he was at Bam's house raging <laughs> how cool is that because though, bam, for bam right he 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 I gives mean, his gate codes to people and like but i'm sure he knows baby cheeseburger since a while he's been he's the homie but yeah bam yeah, like, I, I, fully one one time gave his door code to everybody on his instagram for people to come over for like this event because he's been doing a bunch of events you know you've been watching uh, viva la bam on mtv yeah they had Slayer playing in One there. of my, yeah, Slayer. When he just got the house, the first thing that he did was invite Slayer to play. That was pretty rad. I, I was also impressed about his hospitality, right? Because he just, you called him up and he was fine to have the three of us in there for five days, no questions asked, no money asked, nothing yeah. asked. And then there was like five other people also staying in that house. And then, one day there was a party, yeah. and then ten other people also stayed that night, and it was just he, yeah. just like an open, open heart, I guess, or something. I don't know how to say yeah. that. Well, for me, really for me, Bam, Bam is like my teammate almost on Element because he used to skate for Element, and then our mutual friend Winkle is like a good friend of Bam's too. So it's not like we're complete strangers, you know. We're like homies. That's yeah. what I want to cool. say. You know, it feels like sure, it feels like it. Okay, so shall we shall we try and watch the second clip that we have going on? Okay, if the viewers are ready. Here we go. Yeah. So what's this? Flo Florinapolis. Florinapolis, Brazil. That's that where guy is, over there. Where is that? Is one of the best, uh, or actually the best downhill slide skater in the world. Like he's got like seven championships. And he, and this is his son Fernando. Shout out, yeah, my G. Straight from Floripa, doing 1080s on flat, and it's really scary. Like I went there, that was the, our first session in Florianopolis, skating that downhill, and I was really not sure how to use those gloves. But these guys, 
they're shredding shredding their wheels shredding their their uh shoes you know i was shredding my pants because i was falling so much see how it's long so what, kind, what kind of boards were they but using or wheels or anything what was their their their, their setup well, like? The UP family is all about using any kind of skateboard. Like Sergio UP, he's, he told me that he doesn't care like what kind of skateboard it is, like slalom, street, vert, short, long. Like it's all skateboarding. It's all one love and one fun. There's the man himself, the man of fire. <laughs> and the man of the best power slides I've ever seen for sure, that layback one. Where he puts his knee down and the helmet down. And this Thank is, you so much, uh, Gaston, for uh, thinking of doing an episode about the UP family. This was your idea, right? Yeah, I've known Sergio for a long, long time. And I've never really seen anybody yeah. going downhill like the way he does. Yeah. That's you used good. to live it's in Puerto Rico, you say? Or you used to go, right? I used to go, but it's cool. But that was eight years ago because there's this uh, this uh, sponsor called Kicks, who actually sponsored uh, Sergio, and they're from oh, yeah. Brazil. And they, yeah, and they would organize this big uh, skate contest, and a lot of people from Latin America would get. So that's where where we got to mm -hmm. see him. He's still living out there and ripping with all his family now. Hey, I have a question for you, Gaston. Okay. What was your guys' motivation or original idea behind the show? Oh, that's a cool question. Well, I think I think uh, the motivation was to try and shine a light on different kinds of skateboarding. Different in the sense that it seems like on, on, on the skate media, at least, you, you get to see one kind of skateboarding, right? Like people skating in one certain way, which is incredible and it's amazing and I love it. But skateboarding seems to be like something way broader than that. And I do remember that kind yeah. of like when I got into skateboarding, it was there was so many different things in it. So I just wanted to shine a little light on 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 these people a little bit. Wow, that's amazing right there. Yeah, these guys yeah. definitely well, need you. Some light on them. Well, for me, I'm down for the ride. You know, like go and explore, like people and skateboarding and I've learned so much the last year like just hanging out with all these people that you know skateboarding is skateboarding you know it's the process of using a piece of wood with some wheels and have fun with it really like do it as if nobody's watching right like come on oh, there's there's Sergio Look, he's doing slalom slalom there's a lot of people in Latvia where I'm from doing slalom so I do. I've done it as well before. So that was rad. Just look, double handstands. <laughs> <laughs> That's so epic. That image. Yes. Yeah, we were Dude, doing handstands every day. A shout out to Danny, who's like pretty much the 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 heart and soul oh, also yeah. of the thing. It was just the three of us, right? You, me and Danny, we the the three of us did all of this together. And then Danny sat down in front of a computer for months editing this and he also yeah. did he he also killed it on following these guys downhill, eh? This one things like Seriously, this. This is probably one of the gnarliest things Danny ever filmed because this hill is so scary to just stand on top. I'm not even talking about going down. So Danny Milan, thank you so all your work that you've done i love you <laughs> i love you too thank Danny. you <laughs> yeah. yeah and this is a different cool. city in brazil this is a different city yeah oh Tamboriu. there goes my pants Tamboriu, you know yeah my challenge was to not fall basically Were you successful at it? No. <laughs> I fall every day. <laughs> Look at that beautiful view. I think they've done some contests on that hill before too. So downhill oh, slide contest is basically that. like... Yeah. That's easy for Fernando. Fernando Yupi, much love. Yeah, he's trying to... I appreciate to that story, yeah. That Sergio. 
Sergio, oh, this is so sick. What story? Wait, let's go. T tell me, tell us about this one. How it went? Because this one is gnarly. That one we only had one try at it because you don't want to get burnt and there's no joke. Playing with fire, we all know that. Like, scary, scary. Could you see anything where you were going through? How do you go? Do you close your eyes? How was it? Oh, I just jump into the fire, you know, like, believe. <laughs> well, I didn't I do just anything the hard, story... just Ollie. I was saying how crazy is the story about uh, Sergio just winning every single downhill slide contest that there was out there. And like, Fernando became a pro and then Sergio stopped competing and then Fernando was kind of winning everything. Yeah, trying to take him out. Yeah. Trying to Look get at this more, question. This... more than seven. This is an interesting question. How quickly do those guys blow through wheels? I'd say every session, every session they go through a set or even two sets of wheels, you know, and shoes as well. What about so, you? How many sets of, of wheels did you go through on that film? I went, th I, I went through probably three sets, had to borrow some wheels from the homies and yeah. That's how it goes, you know, if you want a power slide, you got to power, power through some wheels, you know. Right, because there's something particular about the way that this guy skate, no? Because usually you have the downhill guys, which go on like really long boards on, but then there's these guys who use like kind of like normal yeah. street boards and they do They use regular boards, crazy, right? mostly, yeah. That was cool. Should I ask you another question? I'm looking at them right now. All right, jump in the fire. What was your, uh, if you could teach any animal to skate, which one would you teach? Monkey, like in that movie where the monkey was skating? Probably. Yeah, that would be difficult. How long have you been skateboarding? I've been skateboarding since 2001. So almost 20 years, huh? It's about to be 20 years next year. Joshua Berg wants to know how long did it take you for you to get good at skateboarding? Oh, I was good as soon as I started. As soon as, as, soon as I stepped foot on board, I felt good. <laughs> I guess that's a great <laughs> I, I, ate, I ate shit and I definitely went high a couple of times from getting too many shinners, but that feeling was good. So if that feeling is good, then you're good, you know, you're good at skateboarding. Alex Highfield wants to know what's your favorite color? Mellow yellow. This is an interesting one too. B Rolling wants to know why haven't you colored with my boys GX1000? Come to SF. Well, other than that, because it's, it's really to skate with those guys because they really skate the most deadliest hills in the world as well and they don't use gloves like the up family does not to say that up family those guys skate sf mellow and their own style but yeah actually i met andrew from gx when i went to cuba recently so he said i can come over and yeah i'm a big fan of their skating it would be rad to do an episode about them for sure like, San Francisco is crazy. There's another one. What's your favorite kind of skateboarding that's not street skateboarding? What? Is there any other type of skateboarding? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, mini ramp? <laughs> Bowl? No, I mean, I don't do favorites, you know? Like, everything is different, and I appreciate all kinds of skateboarding, you know? So, but if my favorite would be probably downhill, but that's street too. So that doesn't, I don't know. Let's say bowl or just flat. Nicole wants to know if uh, he or she should skate. Definitely. Skateboarding is a good, th good thing to have, like to get out of the house and do some physical activity and have fun 
hang out with the with the homies and learning new tricks and just the feeling of riding a skateboard is so good and you don't necessarily have to be good you know it's just doing it like rolling from point a to point b without falling like because skateboarding is like jumping into the fire or or swimming into crazy waves like this is adrenaline rush like you're definitely going to get an adrenaline rush and it's going to put you to the extreme because asphalt or concrete is no joke you know like when you're going to hit a rock skateboarding you're going to fall that's going to get your blood uh, pumping for sure and it's good to do a, a physical act- activity every day and skateboarding is the one that i chose you know i tried many different sports before but skateboarding was just so fun that was a great answer this is an interesting question too it's uh very uh, uh it's interesting for americans why do you feel like the south alabama and mississippi gets left out on spots to hit this is Camer- Cameron A. Moore asking. Nah, I'm sure there's people in the South that are skating and there's some guys that are really good skateboarders that still go to the South. But yeah, mostly people just do, I guess, Cali, Cali Arizona, New York, Florida, and the middle states get left out a little bit more. But that doesn't mean it's left behind, you know? Like, it's there. The spots are there. The skaters are just like, too lazy to get in the car and go sometimes or you know but the spots are good and i would love to go down south i'm a big fan of the blues in mississippi you know <laughs> i love the music I down know. there and i hey should we stop with the questions let's let's run the next next video let's do it i'm down let's go for the third one the, yeah. uh, oh this was perfect timing with the security What's the I problem? actually tried it for like 20 minutes. I couldn't do it. And then I did it. Well, not 20 minutes, 10 minutes. No. This you is Dan this he, he's, uh, he's from Detroit, right? And he's a blind skater, completely doesn't see anything. He has to use a stick. And yeah, we're, this is the first day, first spot. It was amazing. And this is Justin Bishop. Who, who who is from Vegas and he came out to skate with us in Detroit as well and he ate shit. He cut his cut his knee on that one so he put a, a shirt around his knee. Wow. Yeah, this is the first day, like getting some spots, like getting some tricks and Yeah. It was insane to see or even imagine like skating without seeing anything, you know? Like can you can you imagine like looking at spots and I mean, then it's like nothing else exists in the world, you know? It's just the skateboard and the surface that you're using it on. So I'm sure these guys are having it. Can you tell people what that little beep is and what is it for? Oh yeah, there's a little white box you see on the tranny by the coping. That's Justin's beeper that makes sound. So he can tell which which direction to go because, you know, he he has, it helps him find orientation in the room basically. the first time on the first session when he put the beeper on, I didn't even realize that he did it. I was just like, what, where the hell is this sound coming from? What is this sound? And I was like, and then Justin's like, yeah, that's my beeper. And I was like, well, what's this annoying sound? And felt a little like an asshole, but it's funny, it's funny. I don't mind the beeper at all, you know. And this is uh, Dan Mancina's local park. He did a heel for 50-50 right here, go. back to back one of the best back-to-backs i ever got How cool is that, Kill for front 50. I, i've never even done that trick without uh with never even done that trick and he does it doesn't even need to see and he does that trick and this was crazy because this spot is narrow it's a five stair narrow uh, spot and actually one try Dan actually asked me, like, hey, am I going straight? And I was like, yeah, you're going straight. You should be fine. But he was actually not going. So he jumped with the knee into the rail and hurt his knee. And I felt so bad. But he was all right. Like, this is the next day. He's skating, you know. Yeah, but then do you remember remember this day that Justin did the ball's dive? I almost got run over (laughs) too. Yeah, there was a car. So we all had to show. Oh, this is the try where I told him, yeah, you're straight. You're straight. And he fucking, oh, I'm sorry for swearing. Didn't mean to swear, but that was crazy. Uh, from crooks to fakie, 
can see Canada across the water. This is the Justin Bishop try. That was scary. That was so scary, dude. Back to back, another back to back, friend 360. Yeah, those guys are way better than me. <laughs> yeah. Justin Bishop and Dan Mancina, they were not always blind. They, both of them became blind, like started becoming blind maybe like seven, eight years ago or five years ago, and they gradually became worse and worse and worse. So now they both completely don't see. So they've just adapted to their uh, their environment, you know. Adaptation, much respect. This is when we were skating a new bowl that Tony Hawk's foundation built in Detroit, right? That's in Detroit, I think. And like this, Justin Bishop never skated that bowl before, and he was dropping in on it. And I was like, how is that even possible? He was telling me to go, asking me if I was going straight to and. Dude, this is insane. Skating a flat bar and then doing it in a line. I think Dan Mancini is filming for a part or even has a part for uh, for real coming out soon. Or it's it might be out. And uh, yeah, this this day, Justin Bishop, he never done a handstand before. So he wanted to get a handstand. Oh, he hit a crack. He never done a handstand before or he done like small ones, but we wanted to do a proper one, so boom, we both did it back to back. And then he's like going, like waiting for me to catch him because there was cars on the sides and he didn't want the cars. So we had to hold hands and he's holding my butt, of course. <laughs> <laughs> that was so epic that day. Oh, this was so cool too. How was that? I don't how, know, who's uh, that guy? Yeah, how, how, how did it feel? How, was it easy? Was it like more difficult than what you expected? Definitely not easy. Definitely not easy. That back 180 took me forever. And then I did a tray flip on flat too, and that took me forever. It's like a different ball game. Skating without vision. Oh, he kicked, kicked with the tray. Oh, my pressure flip. Or I mean, Casper flip. Look. Justin Bishop, you are a G. You are a legend for skating like that. Wow. I'm trying to go to Vegas and come see you ASAP. It was a pretty humbling right. experience, I feel, spending time with those guys, huh? Dude, for real, like, yeah, I would close my eyes and just be sitting in the back of the car with Dan and just hanging out. And then it just makes me really appreciate life. Like, sometimes after visiting those guys, I'm just myself thinking like how grateful I am for being able to see to smell to touch to taste because yeah you gotta appreciate and it's the most important yeah. definitely puts you in check and gives you a, a, a cool perspective on life right yeah. sometimes sometimes you feel your problems are like so ginormous and then you realize that maybe it's not so right. You like this question thing, huh? I have yeah. one for you. This one is interesting. So, how do you how do you learn how to handstand? I was uh, skating with Nick Garcia, like Evan Smith, Mark Appleyard, and another time with Wes Kramer and Joseph Scott. And like it was around like the same time that we were like, all right, let's try to do this handstand. Like, and everybody tried, even Appleyard, and everybody pretty much did it. But I really was so amazed by the handstand that I just kept going. You know, I just kept doing it every day because it was so fun. Handstands are not hard; they're fun. It's like What's riding a bicycle, you... you know. Say, say. It's like riding a bicycle. Like it's easier to hold balance if you're moving, moving instead of. I can't walk on my hands. I can only skate on it because then I can use the inertia to keep my balance. What's the longest? And the longest one, really like done. one one minute. I've done a one minute handstand, trying to find a better hill to do a longer one. That's cool. Should we uh, all, should we do a shout out to the people watching? Uh, ask them like, what people should we do episodes on? Like in the next season if it's if it's about to happen like if you are if you know anybody 
with an interesting personality or crazy skating like the GX guys or any of the episodes that we've done here. Like maybe we do a show about them, an episode about them in the future. So please leave a comment. Totally. That would be that'd be rad for sure. Definitely. And also feel free to comment on the things that maybe you've liked on the show and also the things that you, maybe you didn't like. <laughs> What shall we do? Shall we get, go to the next video? Because if not, we're gonna we're gonna end super late. Can I describe how it felt to skate blind? Mm -hmm. It felt crazy because you just flip your board. I was trying to do a tray flip, and it took me like seriously fifteen minutes. I was getting so pissed. I was starting to throw my board, but eventually I handled it and it worked. But it's a game of patience and determination. Seriously. Have you ever tried it before? Have you ever skated blind before? No, no, but I recommend everybody to try at least once. And can you also, do you remember also when we went to see uh, the place where Dan worked, Dan Mancina? Oh yeah, Dan works with the kids, yeah. Works with the kids and helps cool. people with the similar condition to his. He helps them to cope with their daily life. and. Yeah, that's his job. So he inspires people on the daily. Next video. Yeah, do you want me to read? Yeah, let's go to the next video so we don't we don't take that long. Oh yeah. Oh, this is the best. This is the trick that I'm most hyped on in this show. Can you describe it? What is here my... going on? That's the Travis Pastrana's house. He's getting his uh, his bowl with Beaver Fleming. Yes, Beaver is a Nitro Circus athlete, and Nitro Circus is started by Travis Pastrana, which is why we're there. We just decided, since we were in the neighborhood, we decided to go. It was not even a plan to go to Travis Pastrana's house. It was like decided on the spot, you know, like, all right, let's just go, pass by. Maybe he's there, but he wasn't there. His wife, Lindsay Adams, who is the first girl to do 540 on Bird, she was there. We had dinner with her, and it's one of my favorite skaters for sure. Lindsay Adams and yeah, Beaver Fleming. Beaver is uh, usually skates the mega ramp, like he's known for the mega ramp, like tricks he does. And I met him in Tallinn on this simple session contest that happens every winter time in Estonia. And that's where I met him, and I was amazed by his skating. So I was like, damn, one day I want to learn how to jump the mega ramp with you. So that's how the idea about this episode came, like, because I really wanted to jump the mega ramp. And we went to Woodward, Woodward East in Pennsylvania, because they have a mini mega ramp, not really a legit big one, but it sure felt scary, <laughs> you know. Oh, so it's pretty here we're big. Just yeah, I, don't know if I, would, I would say it's not legit. 10 meters wide is pretty, pretty big. It's not like that one that Bob Bernquist's house, you know, not the, yeah, like the one yeah. that Dane Berman did without any pads. Jordan Maxim, he was there. He came out. Woodward Camp. It's like paradise for kids. And there's like, oh. Beaver Fleming. Uh, what, what's that black thing that the, the bird has on the side? What? Do you, know, do you remember how they had that bird that was all like with kind of like a soft ground so you can learn how to launch and land tricks because it's got soft Oh, yeah, ground. yeah, like, like black top with some padding underneath. Yeah. Woodward is perfect to learn how to skateboard. Like any skate camp or any skateboarding. This is scary. Just so, to yeah. stand up there was scary. This is first try. Woo! Oh, I forgot I took that slam. You're not supposed to go to the, to the, to the ramp. the Nitro show, you take the board, smack it over your head. It's a good time. Here we go. The tomahawk. That's his signature, signature move right here. What's up? He does it easy every try. And then he goes to the big ramp on the other side. That's insane. Yeah, here it was uh, one of the tries I landed. And I landed like straight legged. So I was going down like with my butt, my weight, just like on top. Almost ate shit so oh. hard. Shit. So that counts. That's supposed to be a make. That counts. I didn't go to the ramp, but I made it across. Do you remember that you were my using next... elbow pads? Do you remember? Mm-hmm. 
I didn't use elbow pads, so I burnt my skin just from sliding on it and burnt my shoelaces together, like from falling on my knees after. And like my knee pads melted, basically melted down brand new knee pads. Right. Remember that he told us the uh, beaver told us how he travels and he travels with like a knee pad and a few extra uh, plastic things that go on it because after each session he has to change them because they're just done. Yeah, Beaver definitely Ew. has a. Yeah, I was super stoked. That felt really good. I felt like a champion there. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> I asked Beaver to do a late shove it there, on one of the tries, but he tried to do a late shove it over the mega ramp, but it didn't work out. But one day, one day. That's also a signature so, Beaver move, by the way. Was it difficult? Was it harder or was it easier than you expected to clear it? You can see on the left side and on the right side, there's div different levels. So you can start small and then go bigger. So it wasn't bad. Like Woodward is perfect for this kind of scenario. So I think I'm ready to go to Bob's house soon. I already talked to Dane Berman. He's down to take me and Beaver is around here too. So yeah, Beaver actually yeah, just told me he built a mini ramp in his backyard. He's got a mini ramp, super rad. That's what he's been doing when he's been at home lately. A lot of people just been building like quarter pipes and boxes and obstacles at home just to skate their backyards. I guess it makes sense. Yeah. So I don't know, how was, how was, uh, how was being in WeWork for people who've never been? I guess it's pretty impressive. Uh, at least it was for me. Say what? <laughs> I'm sorry. Just if you can, if you can tell people, because I think for maybe someone who's already been to World War, they understand it. But maybe someone who's never been, uh, we like as we said, I I think that maybe World War East is the biggest skate camp in the world, and if it's not the biggest, it's definitely one of the top three biggest in it's the world. The first, so can you it's just the first tell people like skate camp too. I think I think World War yeah, is like one of the first, or if not the first biggest skate camp that there is. And... Woodward East. They have one also on the West in Cali. But yeah, Woodward East is super rad. Those guys were really nice and welcome to school. There's some questions here the about the, how it felt to... What was the most fun trick to do on the mini Mega Ram? There you go. Definitely stale fish because I grabbed, this, grabbed the board early and then I held onto it for... A, at least a second or two because I tried to do it again for the photo, remember, but I couldn't do, do it again. <laughs> I tried so many times, but, and every time it was so scary to be up there on the drop in. And then my knees started to get tired at the end, but I want to go back, you know. So can you describe, because remember we also one day, uh, you guys, you and Beaver gave the kids in the morning, uh, warm up, uh, lesson or class, or whatever you want to call it. Can you describe a little bit? What is it for, for someone who's there? What is it that they do every day? What, what goes around? Where is it located at? Remember that there was like a lot of interesting people living in the vicinity, just the whole thing. Yeah, well, the, like any other camp, there's like a schedule and they start the day like meeting and, or maybe not like any other camp, but this camp, they start in the beginning of the day, everybody, all the skaters, they meet up and the counselors, they tell, what's going on, what's going to happen throughout the day, what's the schedule. And then we did a little warm-up together with Beaver and made them do some yoga moves. And then everybody like went their own ways because like, there's different groups. So everybody went skate to their own parks and then meet up later again. And yeah, it's kind of, kind of cool. Cool. All right. Should we go for the next video? Yes, please. Osaka, Japan. The daggers. These are not the daggers from California, not the Dave Duncan, but these are the Osaka daggers from Japan. And they skate like no other. Look at this new trick I just learned. Uh, back to back with Dal, the handsome. Th these guys call it, this is a chopper. Chopper, he says he does comedy skateboarding. Like his skateboarding is comedy. This is called the Levi's, like the Levi's jeans. That's the name of the trick, the Levi's, because it's like the stitching on the back of the pants. 
I also learned it when I was there. <clears throat> yeah, that's me trying to do some comedy skateboarding. <laughs> but it's just uh, regular, regular. Oh, this is a homie from uh, Tokyo, I think. Go Golden Age. Oh, that's my. Shop. That's my. Yeah, he's got a skate shop that does acupuncture. Yeah. Damn. This is this guy's really good. This guy's really good. Shingo. Oh, Smith. Shingo. Yeah. I think I saw. Yeah. No. no. Oh, this trick. Do you know? Was, did this trick have a name? No, I don't know. He, he probably has a name for it, but I don't remember actually. I tried to do it. I tried to do it. Everybody had to do it actually. Is it hard? Shout out to my mom. She's watching right now. Oh, I did it. I was happy. Look, everybody's happy. This is the plaza where they skate. Like this is the the place where everybody meets all the time and like they just hang out there and really just skate, you know? Like whenever you when you're at home and you meet up with your friends to go skate together, then you skate together, you run up together, you talk talk shit together and this is what they do, you know. They look at this guy. He did not want to tell his name for the camera because he doesn't want to doesn't want his boss to see that he's skating because he doesn't his boss doesn't like him like getting hurt maybe or something. But yeah, he was rad. He gave us a skateboard. He gave all of us a his custom made skateboard. Oh, there's some back three sixties. Oh, that was my fun trick: kickflip, underflip. Yeah, it's Why super fun to just da night? jump down a three stair. Yeah, because there's a police station right next to this park, so we gotta wait for the police station to close to, so we can skate it. And also during the day, it's just so full of people, like so many people. Oh, I love you know what Osaka. You reminded me of. You reminded me of uh, somehow like some kind of magwa from Osaka. Yeah, it's like the local plot place where everybody meets up and. Yeah. Remember how we extended our ticket and didn't go home? We stayed in Japan a little longer. Went to Kyoto. That was pretty rad. I love Japan so much. That was like my second or third time in Japan. This place is nice, especially the bathhouses. They have really nice bathhouses. This was not easy. How, how do you call this trick? Have you ever seen it? It's walking on the ceiling. Handstand walk on the ceiling. Do you claim? Do we claim that's a trick that you two came up with? I've never seen it before. I don't know if I, I don't know if anybody's seen yeah. it ever before. I haven't seen it, but yeah, maybe I did come up with. <laughs> oh, look at this! This is Chopper's idea. Chopper told me to do that. Yeah. This is the first day going in the streets of Osaka outside of the plaza. Yeah. Yeah, I hope you guys watch all the episodes because it's been so much fun and everybody's such a character like, all over the world. Look at our haircut here. Oh, <laughs> this is Dao. What is Dao, that haircut? Hands. Oh, I should have been looking at the camera. There's the longest power slide challenge. And that was the like traditional Japanese haircut hairstyle. <laughs> Look at him. Oh my God. Oh, this is... Everybody's quarantine challenge right here. If you're at home, I, I, I challenge you to do this. How's it called? You tell me. Potato roll. Potato roll. Oh, yeah. It's the Latvian's favorite trick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think we have questions? some questions. About... Yeah, we have nice. uh, questions on this episode. Uh, Thank you. What Red was your Bull. favorite? Yeah. What was your favorite spot in Japan to skate? Wow. My favorite spot in Japan? It must be the Triangle Plaza. I mean, that's where we were hanging out every night. Like, you know, even when we're not filming, I would go there and just hang out, you know, just see with the locals and maybe do some karaoke after. This is another cool one. What inspires the Osaka Daggers to skate so differently than traditional skateboarding? Tell me the answer to that. I think DIY, punk, and finding their own space, which is their own. It's not following anybody else's 
uh, rhythm or whatever. It's like finding their own their own way of expressing themselves. I think that that's probably Dude. what led them. Chopper is filming for a video part now, and he's like really trying to get this new video part out. And every trick that he films, he takes like a couple to film, and like he waits for his body to get really good, and then he goes and does some unique, unique stuff. Like Go Miyagi, if you guys know Go, is like good friend of Ch Chopper, and you can just tell like the creativity is in the air, you know? They That's are just cool. rebels. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Also, remember how we talked to Go. Remember that Go Go was friends with them. They they go and skate together. I, I guess the way they skate has a lot to do, right? They, they're kind of similar in a way. And Chopper told me also that he doesn't watch new skate videos. And I guess he watches maybe the ones he, when he started skating, like this, the videos that inspired him. But the new ones, like he just sticks out because he believes his own skateboarding. He doesn't try to look at anybody else and try to recreate them like he's unique and he understands that he is unique and i feel like every skater in the world every person in the world that this is not a contest everybody's unique everybody's got their own style everybody's got their dna you know? that was definitely one of the things that i liked about being out with them i felt like uh chopper actually pushes himself to find that uniqueness which we all have but he also pushes others to try and find their own uniqueness because yeah. each one of us has its own thing and they use skateboarding as a way to get there so that mm. that for me was really interesting about them they laugh uh, a lot they laugh thing that was that mm. was also cool remember the first session that we went like how it was like it was like a part everybody was just laughing like ah, ha, 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 ha. i know i've been to a session where there was so yeah. much laughter in actually laughing bro my board being super angry <laughs> so there's a nah. there's another question here myers any plans for a new part in the future yeah my new part is coming out in uh, two months maybe in a month today i actually Kremers part drop shares so go to the thrashermag.com watch west Kremers part watch the skate tales you're not gonna regret it that's cool. Shall we go? Shall we and go for one like more? A, there's a DC. There's a DC coming out, and it's gonna have Yako Oyanen, Joseph Scott, me, and Tainan Costa with full parts, and then footage from the rest of the team as well in there. That's right. Looking forward. Do you know when is it coming out? In a month or two. I think it might be May or June. Cool. Looking forward. Shall we watch? Right, shall we watch one more? The next... Yeah. Oh, where's that? Ethiopia? The double set? Oh, we got kicked out right after, right? Got yeah, kicked right out. after. Out. This is Tino. He came on the trip just to join. Like, he's a good friend of ours, and he had a vacation time, so he was like, hey, can I come with you guys, right? And and he came. He's a good good, good times with Tino. He so helped us building, are. right? Remember? Yeah, he helped us build. I build this. These are the low that. But yeah, uh, Ethiopia, skating some flat. And this is one of the only skate spots we've skated in Ethiopia. Street curb cut to gap. There wasn't that many street yeah. spots, huh? A, a lot of gangsters on the streets there, kind of, or like, so we're kind of stressed out a little bit. This is their DIY that was built. Thanks to a lot of international builders together, make life, skate life. Yeah, skating DIYs. I really love it. Oh, this guy is a reggae artist. Give me a CD of his new reggae, reggae album. Dino, he's from Uruguay. But yeah, we went to Ethiopia. It's what? It's in the middle of Africa, where the people, be where the civilizations began, and recording is there. You know. Uh, cool. Were you expecting to, oh. for them to have such a, a, a cool skate park and such a solid posse out there? No, like we got to the airport, just flew into the airport and it was JT Rhodes from California that picked us up together with uh, other Ethiopia skate homies and it was super awesome to see a familiar face. So, you know, and actually happy birthday to JT. It's his birthday yesterday. 
Oh, nice. Yeah. Ethiopia was fun. Yeah. Skating by the fruit stand. The lady gave us 10 minutes, but then she was over it after. A uh, big shout out to Sean from Ethiopia Skate. He's an American, but he goes to Ethiopia a couple times a year, a year and makes Ethiopia Skate happen and works together with the locals. That's JT right there. And this is another town uh, called Hawassa. This is, it's yeah, like this three is hours Hanok. away. Hanok, yeah, he's from UK. This was a fun session. Fun little, uh, so yeah, this uh, is, lot of this is the other out. skate park, right? Yeah, Hawassa Skate Park. Good time. This is trendy. I tried to do a nice front and all, but it, was, it felt real good. And look at all the locals that just came to watch. Did you shoot a good photo of this, or, or was the light a little yeah. bit crazy? I have a nice one. Nice. I hope you like it. Nice, nice. I'm gonna make sure to repost. Yared. Yared. Yared is one of the guys in Pinup, of course. Shout out to the Ethiopia Skate homies if you're watching. Thank you so much for part partaking. Yeah. Thank you to everybody who partook in creating these episodes because I'm super glad it's out there. And I think my dad is watching too. Ciao, Tete. Ciao, Mamu. Thank you for giving me life. And yeah, uh, I appreciate it. Look, it's nothing but love. Only love for skateboarding. Girls, boys. You. Look, this guy's already quarantining himself. Not, not even. It's kind of, kind of screw is walking around the streets like gangsters these days. This is the, tr this is the thing we built together with uh, Tina that came. That little box. We built that box and... It was contribution yeah. to the to, to the local community. Of course, of course, we got a bunch of uh, element skateboards and a bunch of DC shoes and GoPro cameras that we gave away. So thank you to all the people that contributed. Like we got mosaic bearings, OJ wheels, and thank you Gaston for hooking it up by like going to the skate shops and getting this stuff. Because in Ethiopia, it's really hard to get gear, you know. They're, they, their next step, I think, is to learn to make boards at home, you know, make boards by themselves. But all the skateboards in the world are mostly Canadian maple, so just to get those plywoods, it's a mission. Oh, that's Ethiopia, Africa. Haile Selassie, Ja Rastafari. The home of Haile Selassie, the king. Look, that was scary. Almost got, almost ran into the car. <laughs> But yeah, you probably got Ethiopia. a couple of those like quite a few times during during the filming of the trip. You go into a, some sketchy handstands. Yeah, I'm learning. I'm learning. All so right, that that questions? was also another, that was also another humbling experience. Actually, being with Ethiopia Skate. How how did you feel about it? How first I I want to ask you this question. This is this comes out of myself. Uh, how was it? How was it for you, like going to Ethiopia and and just meeting these guys and seeing kind of like what fe what feels is like the genesis of skateboarding in Ethiopia, right? It feels like we somehow were uh, just witnessing the beginning of skateboarding in Ethiopia. How how was that for you? How did, how do you feel about it? Well, I always love going. Can you see me? Did I stop or no? You, you stop, but I can hear you, and now I can see you. Yeah. Okay, well, I always love going to places where the skateboarding is not, not so popular, where it's just starting. So that was rad. Because like, then, then I feel like I'm beginning to skate too, you know? Like, I remember, I remember the times. And yeah, I'm the, sorry for the so quality of my internet. Don't worry about it. It seems like we're on a bad one. It seems like it's been an hour or so since we've been in. So maybe we can go closing. But I would like to ask you, I think we're fine with the questions. I want to ask you this one, which is uh, what would you like uh, for the people to keep, uh, to keep after watching through the whole series? 
Well, I think I want people to go out and skate. If you have never skated before, get a board, go skate. And if you have skated before, then I want you to remember the reason why you're skating. Like, what's the reason why you're doing it? Like, why do you love it? And then, yeah, go out and do some tricks. And yeah, it doesn't have to be skateboarding. It can be any passion. Like, just remember that you do it for the love and you're there for that moment, for that process. So, yeah, is there another video to show? Because my screen, it seems like it's sticking a little bit. No, we're done. We're we're saying goodbye. I just wanted let me let me remind everybody that they have the six episodes live on Red Bull TV right now. If they want to go through them, they can watch those on a, the app that some telephone some TVs have or online. And other than that, tomorrow we'll start with Bam's uh, first episode uh, on Red Bull skateboarding uh, YouTube. And the first Monday of every month, we're going to be launching one new episode on the Red Bull Skateboarding YouTube. So we really hope you enjoy it and you like it. And I'll leave Mars to close this beautiful conversation that we just had. I love you guys. Stay safe. Peace, love, harmony, love for nature, love for skateboarding. Big shout out to Red Bull for flying me around the world to see these amazing people. These are memories. The moments are all we got. Enjoy the moment you're in right now. Go watch Skate Tales and New West Kramer Part 420. It's on. Thank you very much.